Hey, Allie. Oh, hello. How are you? Hi. Good. So <laughs> it's already on here. It's already been recorded. So hopefully they'll edit this out. But Great. I got on because I realized that the flyer says seven, but the recorder notes still have the old time. So you guys all had the old time. And I was like, I don't know how many people would do what I just did, which was I went off the recorder notes and not the actual flyer. So it's just you and me so far. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Wait, so which one, which one's correct? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can drop off and just get back on in 30 minutes. I'm going to just stay okay. off, make sure nobody else uh, gets on early. And okay. Gets... That's so but... funny. Cause I actually put it in my, cl- my calendar is six. So I already popped on here once. It was like, Oh, Hey, what's happening? At <laughs> <laughs> um... seven. So six forty five is perfect. And thanks for okay. covering one of the rooms. If we have too many people, that's great. Yeah, sure thing. Okay, cool. Well, I will see you in 30 minutes. Here comes master. Okay. I'll let her know. Okay. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye. Hi. Hi. Am I early? Yes. <laughs> it's just um so the flyer says seven, but then I realized some of the report notes had the old time. So I, I got on to just sit here to tell people. So you can jump off and you can just get back on at 645. I apologize that we had two different times. Um that was my fault. Okay, sounds good. Bye. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Bye.
Hi. Hi, Ian. It just, we're not starting until seven. So if you want to, you can, you can wait on here. You can jump off and get back on at 645. It's up to you. Hello, see who's jumping on. We're, um, we're gonna get started at seven. So we'll do some pre-meeting stuff probably in like 15 minutes. If you guys want to stay on till then, you're welcome to. You can <laughs> say mute and get work done and or jump off and jump back on, whatever works for you. But thank you for getting on early. So you said 6.45, that'll start? We're gonna we'll start the program at seven. Um, okay. So six forty five, we'll do start. like some pre meeting just to organize with the recorders and facilitators. Yeah. Gotcha. Thank you. Sorry. I, I had two different times on the flyer and the handout I gave you guys, so I knew there's some confusion. So I got on early just just in case you guys jumped on, so you knew it was happening. Awesome. But, okay. Back in yeah. you then. Okay. Sounds good. You can jump off and get back on, or just wait. <laughs> Thanks.
to those who are to those who are no worries <laughs> uh, those who are wanting uh, to hear the presentations today in Spanish. So, Gabriela, I'll turn it to you. Hola, buenas noches. Yo soy Gabriela y yo voy a hacer la interpretación uh, al español. Si ustedes quieren escuchar esta presentación en español, lo que tienen que hacer todavía no, lo van a poner cuando yo termine de hablar, va a salir un globo al, al, abajo en su pantalla y ahí hagan clic, seleccionen español y entonces me van a escuchar a mí en español haciendo la interpretación de lo que se discuta hoy en la noche. Perfect. And so you'll see the globe down there. Good. Perfect. Thank you. So, Michelle, I'll turn it to you. Yeah. Great. Thank you, everybody, for joining the Norwalk Talks Housing. This is the virtual event. We held an in-person event on the 16th. Um, so the state had required doing a state affordability plan um, for all towns and cities. Um, the city delayed on uh, turning in a plan, uh, we wanted to make a more thoughtful um, and comprehensive plan. So we, uh, and then after the fact, the state had put out more um, standards. Uh, so, and then that gave us time to hire a consultant. So um, that's what we're doing now. Uh, this is one of uh, many public events to get more input on housing in Norwalk. This is just opening the conversation and we're all happy that you could join us tonight. And then I'll turn it over to Aaron. Sure. Let me know if you can see that presentation. Yes. Great. Okay. Well, good evening, everyone. Um, welcome to our second Norwalk Affordable Housing Plan community listening session. As uh, Michelle mentioned, the first session was held back on November 16th. And for those of you who attended that, um, we'll have a similar presentation and breakout session format this evening. So my name's Aaron Warner. I'm a certified planner and a senior technical director with AKRF. We're a consulting firm, which has an office nearby in Stamford. I'm joined this evening by my colleagues, Corey Block from AKRF, Kevin Jorka from Kevin Jorka Land Use and Economic Consulting, and Tiffany Zazula and Jessica Batcher from the Pace Land Use Law Center. So what is an affordable housing plan? Well, a few years ago, the state of Connecticut enacted a requirement that all municipalities prepare an affordable housing plan to document existing housing conditions and needs and facilitate policies that can promote equity and opportunity in housing. The development of an affordable housing plan is intended to be an inclusive process with opportunities for public engagement and listening, which is our agenda for tonight. Ultimately, the adopted plan will be a guide for elected and appointed officials with data and recommendations to facilitate decision-making. The basic components of an affordable housing plan are, first of all, a community value statement. This is based on what we hear from members of the community during our listening sessions, like tonight, and stakeholder outreach. A history of affordable housing in Norwalk, a housing needs assessment, which is a data-driven document based on census and other empirical information, a land use and zoning assessment, which involves a review of your existing and proposed zoning codes and how they affect the development of affordable housing, a housing market analysis, plan principles, goals, and actions, which takes the analysis and translates it into goals and action items, and lastly, an impl implementation strategy that describes how to advance the goals. In terms of the overall timeline of the plan, um, we're still in the early stages of the process. Over the summer, we formalized our community outreach strategy and did some data collection. We're currently in the housing needs assessment phase where we're conducting the market analysis, we're initiating community engagement, uh, and by the end, we'll finalize the housing needs report. For the next phase, we will put together the information gathered and start to develop goals and objectives based on community input as well as lay out the implementation plan. The last step is to draft and finalize the affordable housing plan and the accompanying guidebook and implementation strategies such as zoning and regulatory recommendations. 
So that concludes my portion of the overview of the plan and the process. I'm going to hand it over to Kevin, who will talk some more about the needs assessment component. Good evening, everyone. Um, again, my name is Kevin Dworka, and I will be working on the housing needs assessment uh, in partnership with Pace Land Use Law Center. And there's two levels to this assessment. One is a quantitative assessment where we'll be marshalling different types of data. And then there's the more qualitative assessment where we'll be collecting stories and experiences from, from all of you as residents. I'm just gonna give you, you know, sort of some examples of the type of data that you should expect um, to appear in the housing needs assessment, which is now in production. We expect to have it complete sometime over the next two to three months, but we'll be looking at a broad range of demographic characteristics, including um, attributes such as the age of your community or its racial and ethnic makeup or the variety of household types and income levels. Aaron, you can go to the next slide. And we'll be inventorying what type of housing currently exists, what's being built right now, what's in your pipeline. And as shown in this slide here, we'll be paying close attention to, to you know, the trends related to single family homes versus multifamily homes and examining the degree to which your ratio between single family and multifamily, how it compares to the county and, and other neighboring communities. Next slide, Aaron. And then we'll also be looking at gaps and mismatches, collecting data that helps us understand where there is a mismatch between the housing that you as residents need or are currently living in um, and the type of uh, you know, housing that's available. And, 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 and one indicator of a mismatch is housing cost burden. And that's measured typically as a household that is spending more than 30% of its income on housing is considered to be cost burdened. And in Norwalk, that's true for, as you can see on this slide here, more than 50% of your renters are spending more than 30% of their income on housing. And we'll be diving more deeply into statistics like this. And then the last slide here that I'll show you, Aaron, if you could advance, please, are, um, trying to think about you know how different trends that have been unfolding in the way in which housing is acquired and inhabited might reveal uh, directional trends into the future right trying to predict how housing needs might be evolving and changing as a result of different preferences or economic changes or uh different, um, pressures in the terms of the real estate market. And one example of that might be taking a look at how home ownership is changing. In 2010, your home ownership, according to census data, was 64%. 64% of your residential population were homeowners. And now that's fallen to 53%. And so that raises for us some questions as to Will that continue to fall over the coming years? Raises questions for you. Is that something that is as good for uh, the community? Do we like seeing an increased supply of multifamily rental housing? Do you want to increase home ownership? And depending on where we set our objectives, that in turn may dictate how we define our policies. As I mentioned, it's only just this quantitative piece is just one level of the housing needs assessment. And then the next level, which Tiffany is going to talk to you about, is the qualitative aspects, the experiential aspects, your lived experience as residents in the community. And that's why we're here tonight. I'll pass this over to you, Tiffany, to talk about the way we're going to engage residents this evening. Great. Thank, thank you. So tonight is actually more about us hearing from all of you who have joined this evening. Um, that's why it's Norwalk Talks Housing is we want to hear from the residents and 
and hear your stories and understand your needs or thoughts um, and how you define uh, Norwalk's housing. And so what we're going to do right now is actually go into Zoom breakout rooms that will be facilitated by um, people from my staff, myself, Allie, um, and Corey, who we can all wave, will be facilitating uh, the various rooms. And um, for those of you um, who I know are already on the Spanish channel, but just in case, um, those who are wanting uh, to do the um, have Spanish translation will stay in the room. So um, right now, what you'll be getting on your screen is you'll be accepting going into a certain Zoom room. You press accept. For those that would like this in Spanish, please do not accept the room and stay in the main room where we will provide that service tonight. Um, I also want to say at the conclusion of us each having our Zoom discussions, um, our notes of what we do this evening, we will not be recording. We'll actually have note takers that we will show you our screens while we take notes of our conversation. But we will be pull, pulling all the notes from both this event and other uh, dialogues and uh, events that we've had into one big like memorialization of the notes we've heard from these conversations. And we will post those online for everyone's review. And the other thing I just want to say is that after that, at the conclusion of, of this event this evening, in the next uh, couple of weeks, you will also see a survey that we will be posting up online on the city's website and sort of uh, spreading the news about as well to get more information. And you might be seeing us, uh, some of our faces that are on the screen um, that are facilitators popping up at uh, major local events um, in Norwalk as well to uh, talk housing. Uh, so uh, many different ways to participate and continue to participate. Please stay active on the city's website. Um, I think that's a great place for information as well. And um, at the conclusion, again, of each of our Zoom rooms, we won't be coming back together when we're done in that Zoom room. You'll be finished for the evening. Um, so uh, that's how we'll run this evening. And the next few seconds, you'll see on your screen the Zoom room that uh, we would ask you to hopefully choose and Go talk to us. Perfect. Thank you. So Gabby, um, do you want to check if folks that are in this room are here because they are looking for um, translation or a session in Spanish? Then I'll know to, whether to move them. 